the picture that we get of Jerusalem society on the eve of the destruction of Judah is, is one of idolatry. That's one of the most common threads in Jeremiah, that people are worshipping any number of other things besides the one true God of, of uh, Israel. There were several theological uh, changes that were going on in Lehi's day. One of them, I think, was a tendency uh, in some people's minds to want to elevate law above prophecy and the following of the Spirit. We see Jeremiah also hoping that there will be a new covenant written in the hearts of the people. They were performing the outward performances of the law. They were doing their sacrifices. They were keeping the Sabbath day, doing all the things that were easily seen. There's immorality, a great deal of immorality that's going on there. And Jeremiah and Lehi both seem to fulminate against that, that that these people are not living the commandments that they were given. They just didn't keep the law of Moses as they had it at all. There's a great deal about uh, social injustice in Judah, that you had an arrogant ruling class um, linked with Egypt in a lot of ways. In this sense, Lehi is a very interesting figure because he has those links with Egypt. It's clear that he does. His family comes from that kind of upper crust background. He's got money. He's got the proper education. But unlike other people of his social class, he rejects the reliance on Egypt. And that's what's really striking. They were ignoring the widows and the orphans. Um, They were downtrodding the poor. They weren't sharing of their substance. They're focused on their riches and forgetting God, not living the spirit of the law that was given to them. Lehi's prophecies consisted of two main thrusts. One had to do with the destruction of the city if people did not repent. The other, of course, had to do with the Messiah. Both parts of his message made people angry. Lehi would be saying, in effect, it's hopeless. Um, The Lord is not going to intervene on your behalf. You have sinned. If you repent, you might be saved. But they say, what do we have to repent of? Uh, You hear that from Laman and Lemuel, his sons, who seem to be representative of the opinions of the ruling class at Jerusalem, who say, we know they were a righteous people. People in Jerusalem are good people. Jerusalem's not going to be destroyed. The general setting of Jerusalem in its ancient Near Eastern context was one of great vulnerability. Even though people in Jerusalem tended to be overconfident about their views that God would deliver them again in the, in the future, as he had on other occasions in the past. Jeremiah basically said, you're past the point where repentance is going to do you much good. Uh, unless it's really drastic. The Lord has forsaken you, and you rely upon the physical temple to protect you, but it's not going to. The Lord is going to let it go. The Lord is going to allow you to be punished. Lehi was called in 597 B.C. and began to preach in the first year of Zedekiah's reign. People opposed him. Finally, the pressure on him, the threats against his life, were so dense, so thick, that the Lord asked him to leave. In the end, Lehi only had one way out. He couldn't go to the north or the east, where Babylon was. To the west lay the Mediterranean. To the southwest was Egypt, and that hadn't worked for the prophet Urijah, who had fled to Egypt before and had been extradited and brought back to Jerusalem and executed for prophesying against Jerusalem, just as Lehi had done. The only way out was to the south into Arabia. (laughs) 